Good afternoon, everyone. I'm architect Surbi Jindal, founder, CEO, and principal lighting designer of the Light Hub Mumbai. I welcome you all to the episode six of our interactive series called Unlocking the Lockdown. We thank our outreach partner, Smart Home Expo, for today's episode. And I'm pleased to inform to our audience that Smart Home Expo is hosting India's first and biggest event called the Smart Virtual Connect, a virtual trade fair for homes and automation industry from 6th to 8th of August 2020. As we all know, architecture, design, construction, and real estate sectors are all badly hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our small effort to really understand from the celebrated designers, architects, influencers from the industry about not only the impact on these sectors, but how will it also change our ways of working post the pandemic? What all synergies can we have with different stakeholders from the industry? And for this, uh, we have a very, very special guest today who has very recently spoken about the fact of the economical and real estate situation globally and back in India, and has predicted the future of architecture in his YouTube video, aptly titled Future of Architecture, Corona Effect 2020. And that has already garnered much appreciation and applause. To get a sense of the whole scenario, we are joined live and exclusive by the iconic and legendary architect, architect Premnar. Thank you so for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. Namaste, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are privileged and honored to have you with us uh, so much. And we would like to firstly congratulate you for the, winning the prestigious Architectural Award IIA Gold Medal at Vinatcon 2020 by Indian Institute of Architects just two days back. Thank you very much. So nice of you. I'm delighted My pleasure. To model, please. My pleasure, sir. Uh, you don't, though you don't need any introduction, but uh, we would like to share some phenomenal achievements of yours with our audience today, with your permission. Architect Premnath is an Indian iconic architect uh, and the founder CEO of Fasses Premnath and Associates with a wide spectrum of work practicing since more than 55 years, has excelled in wide array of projects with residential and commercial complexes, IT, SEZ parks, integrated townships, hotels, resorts, malls, multiplexes, uh, high-end residential and smart developments. Graduated from the most premier Sir J.J. College of Architecture, frequently referred to as a seminal architect in recent years, has won multiple awards, including the recent Reality Plus Lifetime Achievement of the Year 2020. DNA Sir J.J. DNA Sir J.J. Architecture Award 2018 was by Sir J.J. College of Architecture. Icon of the Year Award 2017. Lifetime Achievement Award by Society Interiors Mumbai 2017 and many, many more. And is currently involved with various smart projects, including the Smart Green Architecture at Gift City Gujarat for SBI and other clients. I would like to add a very famous quote today. Uh, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul and I am the king of my dreams. This reflects your journey, Architect Premnath, sir, and we would like to hear from you your extremely inspiring journey and inspiration to every budding architect. So request you to please enlighten us with your journey and what brought you into architecture. <laughs> Thank you very much. My greetings to all of you, all panelists and all the participants. My good afternoon, good evenings, uh, namaskar, Assalamu alaikum, Satshirekar, everybody please. Uh, you say, everybody uh, asked me the question, uh, how I became an architect. It's something very, very I don't know, I have never thought uh, like it. In, in, uh, in today's society, people are enlightened, they know, the children know about it, as to what they want to become. Going back to, going back to last century, I am an old timer basically. In our time, we had our whole of architecture. Uh, 
بسايد اي شود سي اي بيك ا ماركتر بيك اي كود سبيك انجلش Look, uh, I've been educated in a, in a government school, like a, a vernacular school. And uh, though I was first class student, we were good in math, science, and drawing. But English was like almost nearly we call that. And uh, we had a very uh, poor kind of uh, family background because after coming from partition, we migrated from divided India, settled around in refugee camps. So our uh, uh, childhood, we lost everything. We were a rich, rich family in Pakistan. But when it came to India, it became almost orphan, basically. So we just survive ourselves. Some of other married the education, uh, to, uh, they passed out my school, I wanted to go to university. Then I found that, you know, my mother not well, and we had to make some kind of somebody to make some living. At the age of 17, I tried to look for a job, and uh, uh, normally everybody wanted to become a clerk, or a typist, something like that. I couldn't get a job as a clerk because English was bad. I couldn't get a job as a typist because my spelling was no good. And uh, English, I couldn't speak English. So I finally, finally found a job as a blueprinting boy. Which nobody would take a job like that. Okay, fine. So I say, uh, I had to make some living. And I thought probably it was good. If I gradually, maybe I'll take some night school or something like that. So while uh, studying over, uh, working over there in the engineer's office, architect used to come over there. And they found me, they have a good drawing hand. And in spare time, they give me some sketching, some tracing, some drafting. And they, they, in fact, they encouraged me that uh, I have a kind of some kind of talent available and I should uh, uh, join architecture. And I came to know from them what is architecture. And uh, only thing is we could do architecture. Why? SPA Delhi had a night school, evening school between six to nine. It was great. I could work during the daytime and go to school in the evening and you know, education plus learning go together. No, but I couldn't get admission in, the, in SPA. But we came to know that uh, uh, in Bombay, they did a college of architecture, school of architecture, Sajjaja School of Architecture. And we, some other with a couple of friends came and landed in Bombay. And uh, I needed a job in any case. So I tried to get a job. And unfortunately, since I was a good hand, uh, I had two, three years of already drafting experience over there. I got a job at a good company. And they also helped me get the admission in the college. That way, my coming to Bombay was something like a stepping stone I could get a job and they could help me also get the admission in surgical of architecture. Now, how I, my beginning of journey came to become an architect. Well, uh, having uh, admitted into the college over there, uh, morning school, morning 7 to 10, and over 10.30 to 6.30 was uh, my office, and then the work during at night time, we submission and things like that, whatever it was there. And life was going very well. Uh, but uh, becoming only an architect, normally passing out is normal thing, everything happened over there. So we, from a childhood, we've been uh, some or other trying to do best from our side, like struggling and finding way and moving ahead, going thing over there, trying to find a kind of future and trying to find something better, kind of a, kind of a glory or something like that, other than just be routine. In my college, I discovered that uh, I am not in the school of architecture at the time, the great campus. It has the art, it has the architecture, and it has also applied art and advertising. A very beautiful crowd, very kind of, uh, handsome you know, young people over there, and well to do families kind of thing over there. High society people to come to the art school over there. And I have one kind of guy from a very poor fellow from here. I, I find myself a misfit in a situation over there. It's difficult to adjust myself in the beginning. <clears throat> then I, I realized that I need to groom also myself. Besides studying, <laughs> what we study there, I was quite, and I could, I was quite, uh, quite guy and little busy guy, kind of very meek person can't uh, meet friend and make friend because I still had a problem of my speaking English basically. So I, I realized that I need to improve myself over there. I spent my time in the library, I went over there, tried to discover some more language, some international name, increase my vocabulary, joined my uh, uh, personality development, I went to indo society, Indo-American society to learn how to speak English, letter writing and dancing and things like that. I took all those every Sunday, extra classes to grow myself properly. It took me a year, but that year was very good for me. Sometime 1963, 64, where I found myself that my personality is changed. My, my, my projects were put at the exhibition and everybody in the college wanted to know me, who Mr. Pemath is, what is supposed to be. <laughs> and of course, I, in the meantime, done my good, good grooming, I had a good job. So I'm like a hero in the, in the college. Wow. So <laughs> I passed out, I passed out with the college with top honors in design. 
coming from a very background, from where to where, that, that was really kind of enlightening. I had a duty because I was working, a working boy, to work from 10 to 6, 10.30 to 6.30, for eight hours a day, almost three, three, five days, you always call that. But that was very, uh, working in a good environment in the senior architects and other people who were there. So I had a lot of exposure to kind of for life and in dealing with the customer, dealing with clients. What happened basically, my, 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 what has gave me advantage? I have developed my very good skill of presentation, perspective, illustration. So I always draw a very quick plan, draw a perspective, draw a quick plan, good illustration. So that was really kind of for giving me opportunity and everybody want to work with me in my office and my other piece over there. So in my office also they gave me a chance to meet the client, discuss with the client, discuss with high society ladies and doing, going to their homes, helping them out in their kind of uh, interior designing, decorations, uh, kind of, kind of, uh, I, could, I could explain them very quickly. I also picked up some books of the interior design from the, from the footpaths, you call that. <laughs> no books are available in the library, but the footpaths in Bombay, I found yeah. very good books on the do it yourself and things like that. And I started practicing on that. So by the time I passed out, I almost immediately had a developed good school of interior designing, language of interior designing, vocabulary of interior designing, and sketching and coloring over there. And I enjoyed it, putting coloring, coloring sketches over there. And then I found that there are no interior designers in the city, only interior decorators. Like oh, people like okay. Okay. They, okay. Used, they, they used to have a kind of a, a furniture company, they will do your yeah. home and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Plaster, furniture, kind of molding, and other things over there. That kind of thing, wooden molding. I said, that's not design, interior designing. That's not so, interior designing. Having, having gone through some of the books, international books over there, which I've been studying over there, I realized that in the interior designing, that's something else there. I started applying those formulas and those language and those spoken kind of, uh, kind of dialogues over there. It helped me. To pursue my to pursue my interior designing in terms of the offices or homes while I was studying while I was student while I was a very while like passed out so you may say that I had I have passed out architecture and at the same time develop a skill of interior designing also as part of interior architecture we call that so I yes. happen to be, I happen to become kind of a guy with the edge and that gave me a great great beginning I must say that that was advantage. I must tell everybody, whosoever listening, whether students, young designers over there, you have five years time in the school, in the college over there. Don't waste time. Try to develop your skills and knowledge. A skill of presentation is very important for an architect and an architect. If you can't illustrate, you can't express, you can't give a very beautiful portfolio, then probably he doesn't become a good architect. It's very important. Many of, There are many uh, hundreds of subjects over there. But one leading subject is skill of presentation and illustrations. What you, yeah. what you want to design is show it, how does it look like? That really spells you know, how you have the kids, you show the cartoons, they see the images, they can impress with that. Yeah, we, yeah. Right on the same way. Show them sketches, show the visuals, the client feels very happy and they get convincing on that. Now that power must be must be developed, must be continued to develop all the youngsters basically. A good living example, I have come up to this level. Even today I do the sketching myself over here. I use a yeah, lot of tools to do sketching, but that's the power of the sketching for the architect. That's how I became an architect. I became a good architect in <laughs> college. So very good advice actually for the sketching and the visuals. Uh, nowadays, uh, somehow uh, from right from the first year, uh, computers are started actually. Uh, like they've started working on AutoCADs and you know, sketches is, uh, sketches are done on uh, the laptop. And not, uh, you know, the handwork is uh, missing somewhere. Uh, and which is of paramount importance, as you said, as you rightly said. See, computer is a great kind of uh, development. You know? Yeah. A very, very good tool. We, we were the first one in the country to put computer in my office in the 80s. Yeah. First one. <laughs> I am tech first savvy. one. Wow. I am tech savvy. But I found I had just be such a big money. Computer was too slow that time. It took me yes. three years time to train my people to start, to start doing uh, work over there. And after three, four years time, he made a one kind of a uh, uh, rendering and made small mini walkthrough also. We're very proud about that. It's a very good tool, but your design idea don't come from a computer, they come from your hand. Nothing is faster than head and hand. Even, even you can have pencil sketch in your hand and you sketch it over there, or your keyboard and you have a sketch in your hand. Your keyboard and your head connect together, or your hand and head together with your pencil, idea the same over there. Today we got new tools. The advantage with the tool can help us a lot in you know, in multiplying it, repeating it, making alterations, options, changing color, 
is that it's a great tool. It can be, we can use to advantage. But ideas still have to come from your from mind. your mind. Or Correct. Speaking, from speaking. the brain so, has to speak. That's that's the way we look at them. True. So, uh, sir, that's a very ex very very inspiring and challenging journey for sure. And you you definitely herald a legacy in architecture and interior designing since 1967. Yes. So, what are your thoughts on completing 55 years of your practice? I go back, I see, I really feel uh, 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 kind of nostalgic when, when we have gone through about 50 years, how they have passed out over there. I must say that even at that time, I was a very quick and uh, quite smart and fast guy. We didn't have all the tools, we didn't have it. We didn't right. have a uh, international call, was very difficult to do over there. We didn't have a uh, cut off for faxes that time also there. We didn't have communication skill like telephone, not we have it in the internet, we didn't have it. So how did you survive? We had to share, we had to pick up our knowledge through magazine, books we come through, mail after two months, three months sign from the other from other countries over there. But uh, uh, but knowledge still keep on coming, sharing with the meeting society people over there and you know, high society people, mixing with them over there. You you pick up your thing. Our first unit they were to start an interior designer. I should say I was the first generation interior designer in my country. Wow. I had no interior designer before that. Now I became interior designer because I didn't know how to do interior designer. I had good sketching power and that gave me a job opportunity. Gave me the opportunity of doing the like corporate office in Nariman Point, first corporate office in Nariman Point over there, or a maker for a British company called Bikina Business Company. I could show to the many director my, my design, my skill, my visual, and he felt you are the best architect. I have got so many people running out around me over here. They just dumb like show me only plan. And you're the one telling me three dimensional sketches, visual. We had a lot of knowledge also there. I want you to be my architect for the job. And his team was said, sir, this guy is still uh, fresher. They don't worry about that. He's a smart boy. We should help him up over there and let's make a beautiful office. So I started my career as a beautiful, as a corporate office. as coming to school in my college. And, and thereafter, I pursued interior designing uh, in my own, my, my own friend, among my own friend, my own fraternity. Then we had Institute of IID, it happened to be 1971-72, and we became members on that. Then I became active participation on that, in that over there. And we pursued a lot of kind of seminar discussion happening. I happened to go to United States for two, three months time, two world tour over there. And I, and I got exposure on that, looking at the entire world, how the world is going, new technologies, new material, new trends, kind of something was eye opener. And then we, India was totally closed country at that time. We had no idea how the world is basically working. So that gave me a lot of edge. And a lot of international clients, PWA, Air France, you know, the Sol France, and other kind of uh, corporate clients over there for their offices, for their homes. And my one of my uh, early job was uh, also uh, we had uh, uh, Julius Scott doing his apartment and we started the building. Hiro Bayabani was another client who <laughs> met me in a hotel lobby. And he said, uh, along with Mr. Scott, I was just discussing. And he said, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm an architect doing interior designing for Mr. Scott over here. And he said, come and come and also have an apartment in the same building. Let's do it. And he said, only thing I want a very fast job. I said, sir, you got to find a better person faster than Mr. Pevnath. He took me up to the his apartment and within two, three months time, he finished his apartment and said, I want the very first to move in. And he did that. Now that oh. gave me lead to many more designing, into, uh, kind of doing interior homes, luxury homes for industry people there, uh, corporate people over there. In film industry, I did a house for Dharmendra, uh, his personal bungalow, his home, producers, B.R. Chopra and whatnot. So I had got a celebrity clients from film industry, from any industry, both of them. And, and also the government jobs over there. So I have my hands are full. I had done all the most beautiful jobs, uh, including my own home I built in 1975. It's supposed to be one of the iconic kind of houses. So I have really enjoyed architecture and interior designing. And I interior designing, I became president for my IID twice. I led the, I led the, uh, my team of our designers to, 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 to Japan, to USA. I was the first one in the country Listed in who is who in interior design in the world. Wow. The first one in the country who became a practicing architect in USA. Amazing. In USA. Amazing. I didn't have to say, they say, Mr. Nath, you're so good. You must come and work in USA. I said, no, I better opportunity in my country. 
Wonderful, sir. Many, very less people take this so decision to, you know, solve the I, country, actually. I have a hero in my country over here. I don't want to come and struggle with you guys. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. So that's, I stick to over here. I, made, I did a lot of job in, 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 in Middle East, another place. I say, yeah. I work from India. So I did a great job over there. I enjoyed it. And we've been doing, still now, we still do it here, designing. We do, uh, we do to, like a lot of uh, finance uh, companies job. We do IT uh, job over there. And uh, we had done, uh, now we're doing uh, entire building for State Bank building, the headquarters, entire building with the building and interior designing and fit out complete together. So far, interior designing is part of our life. So today we look at interior design differently. What we do all time is differently. But uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed developing it from state to state. Now, many new materials have come, new technologies have come, and the method of supply that become different things have become contact interiors has come over now. So the job become much more faster and easier. Yeah, exactly. information available to us. It's nice for the youngsters to, to practice interior designing today's time. There are a lot of girls and uh, you know very kind of uh, smart looking kind of uh, uh, designers. They are doing excellent job. Heads up to them. And I think today interior designing is one of the leading fields compared to architecture as well. So I, I really wish that I'm glad that I had done as interior designing and architect and uh, we are pursuing both of us together very well. So you have set a benchmark for everybody actually in today's well, world. Well, I, I happen yeah. to, I don't know, a very and lucky, maybe, yeah, maybe I've chosen one. I happen to do many things, you know, first in my country. But it happened, I think architect, like professional like us, always should try to always stay ahead. I keep right. on researching, keep on studying, keep on trying to new ideas, keep on trying new kind of experiments also there. They help you too, basically. And yes, I'm glad uh, I'm doing good to good successfully. Wonderful, sir. Uh, so coming on to today's topic of uh, future architecture post the COVID era, we are in a very unprecedented situation uh, now uh, due to the pandemic. None of the present generations and even a couple of generations before us have ever seen such times where entire nations have been on complete lockdown. The grave threat of virus has grappled the whole world and India is no different. So we would request you to throw some light uh, on the current situation, which is caused due to the COVID-19. Yes. When it happened, yes, when it happened, the, we happened in the January, February, like getting news over there. By March, it became quite serious matter over there. And by March, and you locked down. By immediately after April, I know because figured out that this lockout is not going to be just simple lockout over there. This is the tragedy of the century. And the, as a job, an architect, it's my job architect to always review my surrounding, see the circumstances, see the uh, picture around in terms of your, your working, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, economics, in terms of picture happening around the world over there. What could be future, future generally for society, for us, for the country, for the people and my profession particularly. Uh, this is my part of also work in my own work also there. I have to keep on predicting uh, about the future of architecture in terms of economics and real estate. I do a lot of real estate to kind of FDI investment due diligence. So I have to always remain ahead of time as to what my future of the real estate will be next four years, five years time. So that habit of mine has prompted me as to quickly without, without kind of missing word, identify as what could future going to hold us. Now, we have gone through this uh, pandemic. It is stay with us basically. This corona has not spared anybody. For a corona, nobody is big, nobody is small. Absolutely. Male or female, no religion, no caste, no creed, you know, rich or poor, big, small, powerful, no powerful, leader, no leader. All for a corona, everybody is same. It has made brought all of us to one level. One level is basically that we need to, we have relied that we need to be healthy. And the poor fellow, a rich fellow, are or of any religion, you all need to be healthy to survive. Time has come to identify ourselves, myself, only myself and my health. That's a new kind of, kind of, uh, kind of trend is going to be there. In time to come now, we'll have our priorities, our basic needs, food, water, shelter, clothing. That we basically set to survive and normally anybody, basically all the things are going to be done there. And also we are learning now Kind of lockdown and able to communicate with people sitting from home, which you never done earlier. 
So we used to try only once a while conferences, video conferences. Now we're doing at home three, four, five, six meetings here and there, connecting the people. Now there's a new new kind of kind of uh, way of life over there. We are alive in the last couple of months' time. And we had learned also, most of us, learned IoT, the use of technology. Whether 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 they, whether the small guy, big guy, or maybe corporate person over there or whosoever they're there, that's a great thing to do that thing here. We are able to do connect to we are able to collaborate. We are able to do distant learning, distant talking, distant business. Which we never done earlier. Today we're compelled to do it. It is a blessing to the guy that we have learned some new way of you know how to communicate and how to handle our business and how to handle our activities. And it has become nice, nice to how to possibly stay at home and you enjoy your life over there. The biggest issue is problem will be there. Economy will be down. It's already down. It will go always half. The world economy will go down by at least 40-50% down. The cost of living will go down. It means what? It means we will have a less income. It means we will have less, income, less spending. It means we will have to spend it only for the basic needs, not luxury. Luxury will be out. Luxury will take back seat. It means that. Is what is going to happen? Uh, so, so, as you rightly said, during the lockdown, people have learned to survive with the basic needs without the fast track life. We have learned to use technology more and collaborate more. Earning versus expenditure is less with luxury taking a backstage. So, because of which, we are also seeing massive disruptions both economically and socially. And there is a super slowdown in construction, real estate, infrastructure, and operations at large. So what does this mean to future of architecture and interiors in this scenario? As I said earlier, <clears throat> that we have, our, uh, because of downtown economy, downtown economy, uh, we'll have a less income, less spending. So there may definitely our saving will also reduce. Now that may real estate, is one thing people normally have in architecture. We have a major component of architecture, real estate basically, and some public building construction over there. So there'll be less buying power and it'll have an impact on our, on our kind of architecture. If I say future architecture, possibly be depending on the economy. Now, the architecture of any place depends on your economic resources and the society of that time. Like during boom time, the Gulf had seen great constructions. It has seen that tallest building. It has seen uh, Dubai and Shanghai making kind of, kind of news over there, all over the world over there. And now, since it's down over there, people are not talking about luxury now. You're talking about survival. So luxury will be out and we'll see how to do things in a more economical manner. I can, I can do contemporary kind of architecture and interiors and I can still have my functional requirement rather uh, than showing off you know, tenure and this and that and kind of frills. The frill will be out now. What we more necessary will be essentials. Priority today, health is essential. For that, we need hospitals, essential. We need education system to remain our, complete ourselves over there. We need also a shortage. We will have basically housing. The housing will be basically affordable class. Today, learning, we are learning that a lot of people from even including our migration labor do not have the housing for them. We need housing in the, in the small area, the B class cities over there. So our housing will become priority now. So people can possibly have shelter, but they can't be wealthy without that. Unless they have kind of, uh, they can't be healthy without that. Unless they have shelter over there. Our shelter will be also not only affordable, it will be integrated. It will be mixed use. I can work from there. I can also stay over there. I can possibly have within the complex to my shop and move on over there. I don't travel, travel outside too much over there. I need to have a healthy environment. Architecture will basically become more of a necessity. It become minimal. It won't become fills and don't become extravagances. It become functional. So, uh, sorry to interrupt your slide 14. Uh, we are able to see your slide 14. Uh, can you... Uh... Can we have on slide 21, please? 14. We are on 21. Right? Oh, okay. You are on 21, so I think uh, my uh, I am only able to see slide 14. Oh, how are you missing? Okay. I'm on slide 21, yes. It is showing your. 
it's showing me actually slide 14 okay yeah can you please reshare reshare again yeah is it okay now um not yet we are not able to see the screen just see what are you seeing there now? I am only able to see Architect Premnath has started screen okay, sharing. Great. Other viewers are able to see. Huh. Other viewers are able to see. Other viewers are able to see properly. I don't know something wrong on your screen. Other people can see. Same way. Okay. Uh, share my she can only see me. Yeah, I can only see you. She can't see the slide. How do we go about? Actually, not yet. I think you should do from your side screen share again. It's the internet problem. Do they have some other screens? Are the people able to see the properly same way they are showing it? My next screen over there, they are seeing properly. Okay. Okay, what I'll do, I'll open your presentation and then. Uh, okay. Just, uh, yeah. So, anyways, we can, uh, uh, you know, move on to the next uh, slide. Uh, so, uh, next question, in fact. So, sir, architecture, as you said, shall be more affordable, integrated, and minimalistic to meet the basic requirements of work and living. Coming on to interiors, the nature of many of our professions to conduct businesses and services is changing as it demands us to be confined to our homes and neighborhoods for indefinite period of time, resulting in self-isolation or quarantine. In fact, your traditional view of homes has been altered. So what are the paradigm shifts in design you envisage here and what are the kind of changes you expect going ahead? See, shift I told you already that our, our architecture will now will be more of a more of a minimal nature to begin with. It won't be extravaganza, uh, that's one. But the architecture will become busy on the today. What are basic need required? Everybody identify health, health, health. Yeah. To survive, we have to health. Only healthy people are able to survive, only healthy people are able to work. Healthy, unhealthy people won't be able to go to work even. That means you have to have architecture and your workplaces to be healthier. That's the priority which has come over there. See, Corona is not going to go away. Corona is going to stay with us for right, like uh, maybe next many, how many years till the time we find some, discover some magic medicine and get ever so immunized and maybe after two, three years time, get used to it, like influenza and like uh, other uh, kind of uh, ailment we had in last century. That become part of our life. But till such time, now awakening come that today everybody think about health and self. Only self and health. It means my workplaces, my homes, my living spaces, my surrounding need to be healthy. And that means architecture has to be healthy. Has to be health oriented. Slide. Today we are conscious about that, that we are moving with the mask around over here and, and we are keeping also uh, among us, so distance is keeping over there. We are becoming a social and we are becoming familiar and we are finding new gadgets for us to do, set to, uh, to check ourselves like virus scan, like we have done your security scan, uh, virus scan. You, you feel that you are more, that way you are already having clean person before you enter the environment over there. You are able to possibly healthy person around you and your body, the clothing. There's a way to check what would happen over there. But once you go to the environment, into the workplace, into your home, Again, if it's a place, if it's a confined, how do you remain healthy there? So our architecture, our interiors, our living spaces have to be healthy. And how do we make healthy? Incidentally, <laughs> the advantage of Corona is there is a blessing in disguise as byproduct. By call that, that we are getting our, uh, we are getting our now pollution down. This was that about, about three, three, four months back. Today we see now pollution already has reduced to less than more than half. Yeah. See the city world over. 
Milan, you see the city at the top over there. Couldn't see the entire city. You see the whole skyline. Venice, you can see the entire kind of water canal. Even Delhi, you also see the entire street. You can see it in sky. You can see it. Within three, four months' time, there was, our mother earth has become, has become clean. And so look at the beach, Chapati. You could never such a clear view. And we were getting more greenery all over homes, around the places over there. The entire city of Bombay, you know, getting green now. Within three, four months' time, magic has happened over there. And we are getting such beautiful, healthy environment. We need such healthy environment in which we can possibly keep ourselves fit and healthy. That becomes priority in our architecture, in living lifestyle over there. And, and with that, we'll have to possibly move further uh, on that. So having done, having learned that we need to be healthy, uh, we started using solar light, solar exposure in the morning, get, get sunlight. You want to, the bazaar some. At the Pali Hill, Bhagno made for him. The balcony facing his side, he comes and stands over there for a couple of sits over there, a couple of hours, had a cup of tea, coffee, and his books and reading newspaper. He never did earlier. Nice, beautiful air conditioned office he had it, but now they come and sit on the balcony. Frame Nath goes to terrace in the morning and see the facing his sun, exposed to the sun over there. Look at this view, vitamin D, how it keeps him more immune. And, and this is the, our old homes. You see a home built about 40, 50 years back. They had beautiful verandas and your light coming in over there. They are a kind of healthy environment. That's where you place people feel healthy, basically. They are old traditional home in, in Kerala. They all around the home, they had verandas. Whether it is south, east, or west over there. But these were the basically healthy spaces. These are part of architecture. Now, these are the home we built in the same style, same line. We made a house for Hindus as in Juhu Beach. Now, they are rich people. The house is, house is basically centrally air conditioned, they got all that thing over there. But at the same time, we brought natural environment in the home. You got balconies, verandas, plants, trees, you know, kind of everything. So the healthy environment is not missing. That's very important for being healthy rather than being healthy. So we have like some, some more home like this where we keep verandas and the natural light comes into the house. We don't need artificial light, don't need fans even there. That kind of architecture normally should be, and we've been having it. But somehow other we lost in the in the in our urban cities area. Really. Now still we have some beautiful homes like this. They're a smaller town and smaller kind of B-class cities and maybe some some kind of select areas of the Bombay. Also we have beautiful home like this. The home at my Pali Hill. We got a nice glass wall up and roof terrace and a deep projection. And with this kind of look at this house. Wow. We built 40 years back. This house in my house at Pali Hill. We don't have grills. We don't have curtains. Imagine, I got plenty of natural light coming over here and natural ventilation for I got louvers for the hot air can ex exit out over there and a cross ventilation, I don't know why, even air conditioning. There's a way to live. There's an architectural thing like that. We need such kind of healthy environment coming into, into the kind of future. This is a home we'll be doing, not now, we'll be doing earlier, for the last 30, 40 years, example of that. Such homes are required to be done built in time to come. That every room should have it with a balcony or a veranda or some kind of outlet over there. This is again my house over there in my, where we had lots of time coming over here and sit and work there. This is kind of basically keep the corona out, get sunlight inside your house. That's really sunlight to your house, to keep it around. Right. Correct. Correct. So I, I, try to, I try to build a home interior like this over there and that is what future is going to be there. That is exactly looking forward it. Now, how to do in, in, in larger apartments, in urban areas, basically. Yes, there also we have got a balconies, big balconies, Miranda. Unfortunately, people try to enclose it. You can get a big balcony, they enclose it. No, no people are asking us, no more enclosed balcony, get big verandas. Veranda is a luxury. Space is a luxury, nature is a luxury. The open space is a luxury, open fresh air is a luxury. This is the kind of balcony verandas which normally we may provide for our various homes. So we bring light into our home, even into, into, into multi-family houses, also apartments also there. Like this kind of thing, Dupre, we use kind of staircases, you can atriums. The natural light is basically a great part of your, it's a hygienic and it's also kind of a, a beautiful kind of environment, basically, and healthy. Healthy. Here they're building a wali over here, see. And the people now try to enclose it. Here they use the balcony as a flower beds. Now the flower beds you know, cool the air, cut down the heat on your glazing. And you got fresh air coming into your interiors, which is a healthy way of, you know, there's a way to think about it. This is the future of architecture should be, a very simple and functional and healthy architecture. Today we are doing new buildings, we started already, where all apartments will have a natural 
correct cross ventilation. The other verandas and cross ventilation. Maybe even the other bedroom or living room or even the kitchen, the servants area, they're all exposed to, including our lift lobby is exposed to natural light and ventilation. Now, this is the way how we could continue building that we have every over five, seven floor, we have break flows. People can come and assemble there and possibly have be there. You, your worker, your servants, other people also beside you, they can come and have break areas. These are luxurious life in the future, where every two, three hours you can go out and instead of going down to the garden, spend time and take the advantage and expose yourself to nature. This is the kind of apartment we're having now. Look at this, look into the garden, into the complex over there, they will end up. That is the future of architecture, which brings the natural light, you know, sunlight, healthy environment, healthy living. That is what is basically looking forward to that. We are already doing it. We were doing it in any case part of architecture. There's an architect supposed to do it. But now it's become more important in time to come. Everybody should think not to miss such opportunities and create healthy living. Correct. So, um, uh, so looking at your presentation, it's clear that the current situation out of COVID-19 has made it more significant to have a healthy environment indoors throughout the natural light filtering in with, uh, throughout the day and more greener spaces around. But when we talk about our second homes, our workplaces, so how do you see the change coming up in the workplace environment? <clears throat> like homes, workplace also very important. We spend eight to 10 hours workplaces. We spend more time there, in fact, basically, or besides sleeping at home. They have to be very healthy. It's very important, basically, because they're the places where we can possibly develop contamination also there. Like this is an office, to give you an example, which we have done over here. And this office was having part of it as a break area. What you have refuge areas in a tall building for a firefighter point of view, and people assemble it as an emergency. But in offices, we created a we create kind of break area where people can, after we two, three hours, come out, spend some time, have a cup of tea, coffee, meet your colleagues over there, breathe fresh air, and have some sunlight exposure also there. These are happening only little layers, only once, maybe some part, maybe a building, you have two or three places over there. I suggest that we should have circular break areas almost every building and more number of places. For example, with this building, every alternate floor are north, south, sorry, on east and west and south, all three sides, maybe a sunlight, maybe an open kind of area. They're giving pockets of break areas where people can come and sit there and feel fresh air and be fresh kind of uh, get sunlight. Like all this building, instead of having large floor plate area, every looks east, where every direction, we have a, maybe three, four pockets per floor where we have break area, because this break area will be a new concept to be brought over there. People can come out every two, three hours and spend some time and be fresh air and get some sunlight. And basically it can be like this, they can be more informal, you can sit out over here, you can have sunlight and you can possibly have it in maybe some cafe and kind of over the break area, talk, talk and discussion over there. This could be informal and informal over there. So such places are very essential for the people to be able to come out. And, and also offices should have basically rather have a large space over there, should have inbuilt cutouts and atrium to bring the light into the interior over there. In fact, when you plan office blocks over there, it will also between the blocks you may create spaces over there to bring the sufficient natural light ventilation and put some trees and plants also there. Now, with this kind of concept happening, idea to how to give natural healthy environment when you're working. Every two, three hours can come out, spend about 15, 20 minutes time and go back to work over there. So you'll have less chance of even getting contamination. So uh, do you suggest any specific changes or upgrades uh, post the COVID era as this is going to change the look and feel of the office environments with respect to interiors and lighting in what we call as the new normal? Yes, I told you now that we should take natural advantage of lighting ventilation. That's okay, done. But yeah. point is, right, while we are working for three, four hours, by four week count of break area, even that two, three hour time, place should be it should be healthier. It should be virus free. It should be clean, basically. Now, what we done, basically, as an architect, as a designer, lighting designer, play a very important role on that. Lighting, basically. For example, I'll give you an example over here. Now, this is the entrance lobby of the, of the building. Reception. The ground floor reception. People, before going into the office, they go to scan. 
they go through virus scan. Now you go to CT scan and you go to virus scan. <laughs> that means you have to carry it twice. <laughs> so they, so they mean you don't carry any, any kind of virus or germ with you when you go to the building. When you go to workspaces over there, you know, we have to use lighting. Now you got blue light. You have normal light also, but we add blue light. Blue light is what? It is coming at temperature of uh, LM250. LM250 temperature over there, this is skin grade lighting, which is ultraviolet light, which is germicidal, which is used in pharmacies, pharmaceutical kind of manufacturing and kind of environment over there. And create the, and keep your place environment uh, virus free, all kind of virus, not only corona, all virus basically. All and beside this also there, you get the blue light, I call it blue light, you call it on your desk, on your desktop, on your district light over the work table. That means every desk has got, plus really you already have it, that should you have possibly any virus happening on your desk over there. Like you have a virus manager, you have wire manager, you have virus manager now, add on to your desk. That means you're making sure that the virus is not around you. Now this is the now new thing, add on will be required in time to come. We had already planned our buildings uh, in, in Gift City, Gujarat over there, which is international kind of uh, customer we have over there. They were quite conscious about that. And this was done, like we didn't know Corona is coming, but you know, this was basically thought about that. But some people are very finicky about that. So this light is available, not expensive, and it can be now possibly more used over there, and it can definitely help out a lot. Like even, even chamber over there. And then and see the sofa side, there's a small light over there, which is blue light, what is, on the desk over there, small light over there. A yeah, small thing possibly will keep you a little worry free. Don't have worry about masks, this, that, what, that, what, that. Can your environment become totally virus free? Also, when you come to homes, in homes also, the same working, you'll be able to now possibly introduce some blue light in lobby as somebody comes to enter some home. As you enter, he goes through a scan, like a blue light scan, and he, he can become virus free basically. And you can use little lighting around sitting area also there. And as you go further, then we can have like a mood lighting on set. Then you can set with a temperature, you can set with a kind of automation over there. You have some light over there. It gives you mood plus gives you virus free environment also there. Here is a beautiful way of making your setting. You have lighting down below the bed and around your headboard over there. And your place becomes like totally virus free. Here is laundry. Even your laundry can be scanned quickly. To figure out your laundry whether it has been heavy, heavy virus or not. Now this has been done, like in the hotels, you can do this very, very handy to your hotel there. This would be a new thing will be required to be done in time to come. Also, these are the work, we have great pride about talking about open plan office, you know, how you open plan office looks over there. And then we have such kind of people, you know, working, hundreds and thousands of people working in a big hall there, they call open plan office. Now this becomes a dead, deadly place. If you have virus, a corona point of view, they very dangerous kind of thing. But so now offices will have to be replanned are refurbished as a compartment, small compartments. Compartments have about 10 people, 15 people. Each compartment will have its own air conditioning, its own fan call unit. That means air from one compartment move to other compartment. Contamination will not tell one compartment, other compartment. Also, I'll add a fresh air, treated fresh air unit for each compartment in the window so that I'm getting more air changes, fresh air coming in over there. So that my contamination and cleanliness remain to only one kind of room of maybe 15, 20 people. Of course, I uh, have many more compartments over there. Plus also, when we have to do some kind of workstations, like open area, can make them slightly of this kind. It keeps you distance around two meter, because social distancing, your own lighting right. and then that over there. Environment can create a very healthy environment, very free environment. These will be new kind of, kind, of, kind of ports which will possibly go into your working areas. There'll be new trends which you expect will happen more than what was happening earlier. You could have had some workstation like this, look very nice, fancy workstation there. Meeting rooms more like that over there. That's the future of our workplaces. I suppose. Wonderful, that, uh, sir. Wonderful. Uh, and these are uh, actually as per the new normals or the new rules uh, that we have to follow. As you said in your first slide, that Corona is going to be there. It's not going to go. Uh, as you know in near future at least for a couple of months uh, so these were really great insights with a lot of supporting visuals uh, giving us a sense of what is going to be the new normal in architecture interiors and lighting so coming from lighting background for instance lighting can't be an afterthought on a project it needs to be more integrated and looked upon as an important element 
right from the planning stage itself, from the concept stage itself, be it a natural environment, natural light, or artificial lighting solution. And we need to explore more smarter ways of using it in our interior environments. And this is where uh, we are pleased to announce our audience about the skill development workshop on smart lighting and new age design thinking post the COVID era that we are conducting on the 8th of August at the Smart Virtual Connect event by Smart Homes Expo. So uh, we invite the audience uh, to be a part of it. Uh, so coming on uh, to your amazing works uh, uh, done in the past uh, and the ongoing projects, uh, would you like to also show some amazing work of yours that reflects these concepts? I'll show you, I'll show you a few more slides of interiors basically. I have a very large portfolio of architecture, I can go for three, four hours basically. Absolutely. But uh, I gave you a continuation of this. Uh, some of the interiors were uh, more exciting and a few small homes also there which go along with the same theme today's work, today's subject. For example, here, we're doing office, uh, when you do office over there, we make sure that, you know, your small chamber has adequate light and ventilation is there. And we try to make verandas and your homes as part of architecture. And a few homes like this, where we again, we play with the light as part of our kind of enhancing the interiors, whether there's a wall light over there, somewhere in the distance, or whether a bar background over here, we will play some drama in our interiors and play with lighting, very good, great tool for interior designing. It gives color and lighting, basically. And uh, here are some exciting kind of our interiors. What you're doing a lobby for a, a residential building, uh, which has got great kind of a place. And again, uh, our theme is how to keep it environmentally, environment, healthy environment, basically, by virtue of lighting. So, light, we play, we play, uh, we, we play a lot with light, use of lighting. Directly, directly decorative lighting uh, networks kind of great tool. And uh, this other one, he, how the lighting effect can possibly create mesmerizing effect. Uh, these are kind of really uh, kind of exciting and plus at the same time healthy spaces. Uh, there are a few homes. Uh, again, we try to use the glass and uh, uh, like indirect lighting, uh, 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 which makes kind of good kind of impact and drama. Here's a home. See the building inside, outside, how to play with the soft lighting on the surface of the, on the exterior, exterior, including your water fountain and garden and the places over there. Create a mood on that. Uh, again, here the other house over there. It's basically, when you see that the children's lighting effect, how it be done in the underside, uh, roof, below the, below the roof over there, slightly in pergola, slightly poolside, small pockets in color. It creates a lot of drama and impact. You can sit in the, you know, it very nostalgic effect over there, very mesmerizing. Uh, it's a glass house over there, kind of thing. It's got three story kind of glass glazing all over there. Wow, on, on the lake side. It's a beautiful kind of, kind yeah. of home which we're doing now. And uh, this is another house, basically, we're doing on the rooftop terrace. A kind of uh, who, that is, it's a bungalow, but second floor, a beautiful terrace has been made for the family and they can spend time in the winters over there. Including bathrooms. Should be more nice. You spend a lot of time in the bathroom over there. It should be a beautiful place. Place a very kind of exciting place. You should love it. Maybe you can make here you do a lot of cosmetic over there. Your health and hygiene. So mood should be good yeah. when you get out in the morning and use the bathroom. And the kitchen also, why not? It should be for the housewife, for the even people working over there. It's a great place. We will try to make our interiors a little more kind of uh, uh, kind of attractive and kind of exciting by using colors, using lighting and play with that over there. And here is another bedroom. Again, in this case, we have played with the, like see the headboard, but the combination of collage of lights over there, uh, blue, green, red, soft and over there. Their purpose, their, their collage, they give effect, this is also the germicidal. Mm. And that's yeah, the way to, how, to, how to play with that. There's a skill, architect must know lighting. Architect should become a designer, mood basically. There will be a lot of lighting engineers, a lot of lighting supplier people over there, vendor, they help us out over there. Look forward to you, know, has shared thought with them. A lot of manufacturers, industry people there. They also, when you when interact with them, we get ideas. What I want, what they give it, what they have it, how we can use it. So oh, architects yeah. and crazy people, they use a very different way. So they how we set our moods. <laughs> but thanks to the industry people who gave us a lot of support on that. And here there's something like it. Can you believe it? The setting like that is a home. This is a home, wow. a large home, it's a large house, it's a villa, 
great we love what kind of place you know that you are reading kind of lounge over there then your body feels different over there at night time a different like four five different pocket one of the corner over there where the possibly family can sit together enjoy it over there this is how we set the mood and and again i say we don't use extra vegans we don't use other frills we don't use chandelier we don't use all of those kind of expensive kind of thing but we use kind of technology we use moods and we create something which is contemporary interiors and architect which become future which is not expensive but at the same time great the how we do kind of work i hope uh, this should be adequate for you too and i i i only say that uh, i have possibly addressed uh, today's issue uh, sometime we'll have a very large kind of a wealth of kind of knowledge and source available in many subjects but today's subject will be limited to that and i i hope to my spectators my people participating must have gained some knowledge about that and look forward to sharing some more information anybody have questions over there possibly happy to answer them sure sir so uh, so that was a brilliant presentation and it's been really fascinating to see the breadth and the depth of what you have been able to cover in over the past 50 minutes and now we before open the forum for any questions i would like to ask last question how do you see the emergence of younger generations of architects in india will they be able to take on the new challenges that will arise in the future especially looking at the current situation see architects are basically have a lot of patience they are tough field when somebody is an architect he knows that this is a tough field you have to do a lot of donkey work you may call that you know a lot of hard work to do it you can't possibly you have to actually physically draw it with a pencil or maybe a pc computer over there you devote about 10 for hours drafting time and you have multiple subjects over there you have multiple problems over there so architects have become definitely a lot of endurance they have it a lot of patience they have it so i have to say the architects should only think is that this tough time it comes it not come only for architect come for everybody I talk time for construction people, talk for, for people in the science, industry, trade, and you know uh, many fields over there. Our living, our our kind of our entire infrastructure, our kind of lifestyle is changing now over there. They will have the patience over there, not to not to get distressed now over there. It's a small time, maybe a couple of years time is difficult time. This time will pass away here. India is a place of opportunity. Let me tell you that I have a lot of faith in my country over there. I may be an ambassador of a country because that I sell India as a kind of whatever. I, I know if you can't yeah. make money in India, you can't make money in Mumbai, you can't make money anywhere else. I can tell you that. A lot of opportunities. We have a lot of development has to happen over there. Our prime minister has given a twenty lakh crore rupees kind of a revival package over there. We spend some days somewhere over there. Maybe half of a month or two come to architect itself a construction over there. So it will have a lot of opportunities to maybe very shortly starting result. More so to happen in uh, B class cities, smaller towns, villages, smart villages. Our shit thing will change. People from small town will come to big cities. They don't need to come. They will find opportunity in their own town. People won't be see. People I, now onward, world over, people won't be making extra vegans up. Like China has given our order not to make building more than 500 meter. They don't want to go tall. They don't want to waste yeah. money on that. All over China, no building will be made like that over there. They say we don't need to have any race on that. Similarly, India also will have to see we don't have to make extra vegans. We we'll have to make functional, beautiful uh, architecture there, and that will be that architecture will be available all over the country, even smaller town, bigger town, and we can have a lot of opportunity available. We will not miss it over there, except little tough time now. We we'll have endurance. Maybe kind of you this next. This will give a good lesson to everybody how to make a good start. If survive this time, you'll survive a lifetime. Absolutely. I have Absolutely. Patience. Very well <laughs> said, sir. Very well. Very well said. Uh, we have a question from Shipit Talikar. Uh, he is uh, asking uh, about how do you choose the materials for buildings? So different materials. Uh, how do you actually watch the process of choosing a particular material for a particular building? That's what his question. See, architects design their building by use of technology, use of the skill of ideas, and use of materials. So, knowledge of materials is very important for the architect. Architecture, whether it is interior or a building, whatever it is, it involves economics. Depending on you know what kind of economics you have it over there, what kind of kind of you have budget available to that. Sometimes you make beauty and budget. 
No, I can I can I can make a simple room. The paint color of the paint is still cost same. Red, blue, green, pink, whatever it is. I can play beautifully with the colors and can I give beautiful interior there. Similarly, when you do the materials, the material I had to see, I had to see the material use over there. I had to get two things. Material has a functional requirement of its stability, durability, a requirement of the look and appearance, tone, texture, and it has got color in the material. So depending on color scheme, how I want over there, whether I want some strong material, whether I want some texture, whether I want some kind of rough texture over there, my, my, my material is rustic, then I've got different thing. My material very polished, and a different thing. My material very plush, and a different thing over there. So normally, you normally uh, you blend your uh, interiors in generally one color, basic color there, and you try to bring one enhancement in one wall, one one big, uh, one kind of corner, one kind of maybe one sofa, one fabric, one curtain, one drape, whatever like what you call it. Basically, how to enhance the particular place over there. That is skill depending when you have how it look like over there. Now this is depend on you what kind of sometimes you can use ordinary uh, material like uh, jute. I can use even kind of uh, material like in fabric which are possibly uh, uh, hand looms, but they are texture and tone and color. I have used yeah. even pishwai which are of rags from the footpath and hung on my drawing room over there. A colorful pishwai and people say, "Wow, what a great thing!" I put it from the footpath for a pretty free price. Nobody want to buy it even there. Precisely, it's an old rag over there and repaired it over there, but a beautiful color. So it is up to you how you think what you want to enhance it over there, depending how your client looks like over there and what kind of his taste is over there. I cannot probably push him, give him something, rag is also riches. I can't give you riches when he wants rags. So we'll have to oh. study your study your yeah. client, your, uh, your environment, your setting, your usage, what kind of function you have it. You, show, you normally develop your skill by the user for trial and error. So budget is also a constraint many a times. Yeah. So uh, we have another question from Kulbeep Matu. Uh, how did you manage? No, you have answered this question, but uh, I think uh, uh, he has again asked this question. How did you manage without softwares during the early days of your practice? <laughs> we were actually mad all of the generation. People, the people who build this building, you know, like our Victoria terminals and things like that, our British architecture there, they were doing hand drawings. We used to use, we have, we have only pen and pencil sure. and we make kind of thing. Them old time, I still use, I use still sketching over there. And today still I do, I use technology, I have a hand phone, note phone, basically, note one, note two, two note ten has come. I use that, uh, that stylus over there, but sitting there in the flight, sitting in the car, I make a sketching on that and press the button and send it over there. But earlier I had made hand drawing with patience. Like you sit down, like, like a kira ki tana, you know, like sit yeah. down. Dot, 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 tick, 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 yeah. tick, or say we have patients over there. But we had developed a very steady hand. We had developed expectations. Our line would go straight. Today, when I can draw a straight line, I can draw a circle. And we have got practice on that. So it becomes like Absolutely. part of our. Look, look, let me tell you. Your drafting in your computer still takes the same time than drafting in mine today. Only computer helps you to repeat it, to replicate it, change it, modify it. That helps you there. But it should draft still take the same time. Because you had your hand and pencil and your keyboard and that thing over there, it's not the same thing over there. It may it cannot be faster because depending how quick you think and yeah. how quickly you think with your hand over there. Yeah. But mm -hmm. add on additional what that what, what we have it today, rendering, tone, texture, base, that Photoshop, Photoshop, what third we we have it, 3D Max and lighting and nothing over there. Great thing over there. Which we could do earlier. We had limitation, but we had some of old drawings are so realistic basically. But we could repeat 10, 12 of them, could make three four four five alternatives. I press a button, kitchen lighting on my, my image. I press a button, make it blue, green, red over there, tone down, up and down. I couldn't do that so fast. Yeah. That's only difference with that. But yeah. we had to patience. So we had a lot of patience over architect. We had a lot of patience because we work with patience, that's why. I think that is something which we all need to learn from, uh, you know, from a legend like you. See, architecture is not a business. You must yeah. understand, it's a passion. It's a passion. You're passionate about your work, about your design. We do, we don't dream. 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 Architects don't dream. We don't dream. The world doesn't dream. Architects don't dream. They 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 dream. Think dreams. <laughs> Very well said, sir. Very well said. 
uh, we have, uh, I'm taking this last question. We are already at five o'clock. Uh, so just last question uh, from Srishti Srivastav. Her question is in a futuristic scenario, can we imagine a combination of wavelengths of light in a luminae to make it a light sanitizer so that we can use it, we can use the same in our interiors? Why so not? her question is, uh, what can we imagine? Imagine a combination of wavelengths of light, so different wavelengths of light in a luminar, uh, in a luminar, in a light fixture, to make it as a light sanitizer uh, equipment, so so that it can sanitize the whole space. In fact, that what I've shown you, what yeah, I've shown the, particularly, yeah, to show yeah. you, my you notice over there, yeah, I've put inside yeah. of sofa one arc light. What is yeah. the color te temperature different? So yeah. working a piece of light at the same time giving me German shadow effect also there. Yes. So we, today we have to have lighting as sanitizer itself only. Yes. So I can't have all blue light over there. I need German shadow light only to some extent. Right. So I'm trying to do more like a mood uh, kind of setting under the right. sofa, below the bed, behind the pelvis, behind the corners, thing like that. So there's a way of doing machinery. So I'm saying the German shadow light will be part of our functional light. I'm saying right. that. Correct, correct. And I think there's a lot of research also going on by the Harvard University and uh, other universities in Colombia as well on the germicidal uh, UV. Let me explain you. Let me explain you. Yeah. There's a lot of research done already. Yeah. In the US, people, they've been doing for the last many years. Yeah. In pharmacy company, they still be doing over there. Only thing is now industry people, like manufacturer people, they had to start implementing them into our fixtures. True, How to be a fixture, good looking, how to be smart looking, how to become oh. part of our new fiction over there. So the oh. industry will have to possibly give us something, how we can articulate and then I can use that. Oh. Technology is already available there. It's not expensive Absolutely. also there. So all you have to re-manufacture it, make some smaller one, bigger one, smaller thing, different kind of form. And people are still very smart, very shortly, they're going to come with different combination and be available to on the, maybe on the Amazon in time to come. <laughs> it's very easy oh. to do that. Great. True. So we have to deploy the technology. The technology is already available. It's available so already. I, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to leave it over there, sir. And uh, we really hope we are all able to smoothly transit in this new age design thinking. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your positivity, your enthusiasm, giving a realistic sense of where we stand and where we need to go. And I deeply appreciate your time. We all deeply appreciate your time. And once again, I congratulate you for the Indian Institute of Architects Award. The uh, people who joined us late, the audience, the attendees who joined us late. So nice. I would <laughs> like to inform. Uh, I would like to uh, inform that uh, Sir has been awarded with the uh, the future the IIA Award, the IIA Gold Medal uh, at NatCon 2020, just two days back. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you.